Hi, I'm G. Craig Lewis. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, this is episode 10 of our exposition. And we are here today. I'm here with Jay Bryan, Carmina Barnett. And uh, we want to thank you all for your support during this first season of our show. Uh, this is our last episode of this season. Yeah. Well, but it's well. been a good run. We have... <laughs> A lot of things were shared, like you were saying in the back. You you even learned a lot. Yeah, it's uh just it, it's been great. Um, uh, and today we're going to be talking about church and the millennial mindset. Uh, we're going to be dealing with some things uh, concerning the millennials and the way they are approaching the modern church today. Well, in researching for tonight's questions, I did talk to a lot of millennials, so these are actual questions. So okay? the, other, the others haven't been? No, like, no, no, but these are actual from millennials. Okay. Uh -huh. So my <laughs> first question, preachers were once highly revered, especially in the African-American community. Why has that changed? Why is it different? Um, sin. So it's, it's, it's sin that has, has caused a lot of, uh, of the reputation of preachers in, in today's time to be tainted. So their reputations have been tainted. Um, so many preachers, they, they, don't, they don't have the true call of a pastor, even though they're pastoring. So what happens in this, in this particular form is that it causes men to fall to temptations. And so that, that'll mess up the message. So if, I have, if I'm pastoring and I'm not called, um, meaning that if you're called, God is going to properly prepare you for that calling. Um, you put yourself before people before it's time, or you put yourself before people for the wrong reasons. And what happens is that flesh get in the way, and then that'll ultimately mess up what, what, what we all need, which is the true message of, uh, of Christ. Um, so that, that's what we're dealing with in today's time. And that, that makes a lot of sense. People don't realize that, but you have to be called a pastor to have the grace of pastoring on your life. And so we see a lot of, you know, people tell me or they complain saying, well, this preacher, he just sold out. Uh, uh, he's preaching erroneous doctrine or whatever. Well, I would almost bet that he wasn't called to do it. Right. Uh, those that are called um, are really, I mean, truly chosen by God. They're going to stick to it. Now, something you said, and I want to straighten this out. All men fall to temptation. OK, so, I mean, if you're human at some point, you may fall to some kind of temptation, whatever it is. But the difference between the called pastor uh, and then the one that's just doing it for whatever reason is the one that's called is going to. The, if, if he does fall, he's going to fix that, right. get that right. Mm -hmm. But it, it will never affect the integrity of the word that is being preached. That's the difference. It's not going to ever change. So he's not going to change the message to match the sin that he wants to be in. Absolutely. That's somebody that's not that's not called. Yeah, okay? and then, Go ahead. Uh, as far as the reputation part of it, um, why is that so good? So if we look at Proverbs 22 and 1, it says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. So what happens is if you choose to become this pastor or whatever you're doing within the church for, for means, uh, the Bible is telling you that, that that shouldn't be what you, you should be after. It's the good name that's more valuable to God, right? Because um, even, even in the church today, we, we see a lot of people, even amongst the world, you know, they, they come to, it's like almost like a duality. They do one thing in the church and then they go out into the world and they'll bend and fold, which we're going to un unpack a little bit today. But it, it, you can tell blatantly that they're after the riches and they're after the, the notoriety in the world versus a good name of God. Yeah. Yeah. They're choosing the riches. Uh, and that's why they're passing a lot of, them. you know, right. I've had guys tell me, man, I'm going to start a church because that's that's a secure income. I don't want to be an evangelist no more. I don't want to be a itinerant minister anymore, because if I start a church, then that's guaranteed money. They've wow. told me that. And I'm right. like. Dude, you crazy. You yeah. wildin' and eventually your message is going to be watered down because, you you know, you weren't called by God to do it. And I think that's the biggest problem when you say even with the question preachers were once highly revered. I think more more preachers took the job seriously and that caused the reverence uh, of it. Um, and then um, another thing is uh, people understood authority better. Right in the past. So in the eighties, nineties, whatever, you had more people that understood authority because more people grew up with authority in the home or they grew up with a father in the home. So now, um, so many people are growing up without understanding, submitting to authority. A lot of wives don't even, I mean, I've had women tell me, Oh, you mean I got to submit to my husband if I marry him? 
I'm like, what? They don't even understand submitting to a husband. They don't understand submitting to a pastor or any kind of a authority because they grew up without an, a strong authority prevalent in their home. So I think that plays a big part in why uh, preachers aren't revered because people just don't have that kind of respect uh, anymore. Well, then let's stay along those same lines and talk about the house of God. That too was highly respected, but now you see so many worldly activities that we once wouldn't allow. You see them front and center in the pulpit. I mean, you see all the modern dances, you see just a lot of things that sh I don't think should be. Yeah, and so some, uh, unfortunately this has been going on for a very long time where people feel like, you know, they have to be like the world or they have to mimic the world in order to win the world. Um, and, and that's not the way we should go about it. So if they feel like if they add worldliness, in the church, then that's what they believe can draw the worldly people. Well, didn't the Bible say, Christ said, if I be lifted up, I'll, I'll draw the people. All we're supposed to do is what we're supposed to do. That's what I thought. Right? I mean, that's, that's, that's really all it, it takes. But it also, um, Matthew 12 and 26, where it talks about uh, Satan casting out Satan. It's like the opposite of that. Dealing with, so you have to go against the Bible to do that form of evangelism. You can't use the same tactic. And we, we use this reference all the time, but it's, it's just funny. If I'm a crackhead, <laughs> well, how do I win another crackhead? But hey, man, you want to you hit this line with me? And then talk about the Bible at the same time. It just doesn't make sense why we would try to use worldly tactics. Um, why, would, why would we, and we still see it today, as, as much work as EX Ministries is putting in at the forefront about hip hop, you know, people are still using that tactic, that old school tactic. People still feel like it's rev relevant today to use in order to draw young people. And now we see a flux of young people who, who don't revere God, who don't care anything about the church, et cetera, because they've seen so many inconsistencies. So um, unfortunately, that's what we have. We have uh, a, a bad pattern of trying to use things that the world used to draw them out of it when that's what we're supposed to pull them away from. So it's just it's just a bad cycle that we've seen. And, and uh, I, you know, I haven't even been able to hear what you, the rest of what you said because I'm still stuck on a line of crack. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet the crackhead that can do a whole line of crack. And do they even make a device that will allow you to do? I, I wouldn't a know. Line I've, I've, I've never indulged. I have no clue. <laughs> but it seemed like it made the point. It drove it home. It, it was, but <laughs> that's King Crackhead. <laughs> He can do a whole line of crack <laughs> and talk about that and say you can you can get folks saved. Why, why are you doing it? You somebody, man. If you can survive, talk about it. being talented. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I believe also, you know, in in accordance to what you're saying, spoiling of the goods is always done by binding the strong man. So whether we're talking about a home, whether we're talking about a church, if the strong man is bound, mm -hmm. you're going to get the the devil's going to get the goods. That's what the Bible says. The issue here is the strong man is bound. He's either uh, bound by, you know, sin. But most most of the pastors today, what I've noticed, even the ones that I've talked to or counseled with or different things, they're bound by women mm -hmm. and they're bound by women that assert male authority. Um, and this isn't this isn't a new thing. Revelations right. tw two and 20, when it's talking about the church of Thyatira says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffered that woman Jezebel that calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So basically, um, these women that this, that the Bible is referring to or this spirit of Jezebel and these men that have been emasculated by it is saying that it's the, these women in leadership that are leading the people into spiritual Fornication, right. meaning bringing the world in. Mm -hmm. Whenever I've seen it where the world is coming in, worldliness and different things, it's usually either a woman over that uh, particular church mm -hmm. or an emasculated male pastor who is being overthrown by his wife's authority. Right. And either way, it is the spirit of Jezebel. And this is causing the church to embrace and mix sacred and profane things. That's what spiritual fornication is. So a lot of the stuff we're seeing coming in, especially when you talk about the dances and different things, you know, even the homosexual boy that are saying and do all the roles or whatever, or even the, you know, the guys who look dressed like women or are effeminate with, you know, earrings right. and uh, two earrings and, 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 and long hair, slinging hair and all this stuff. Women are kinder toward that than men. Mm -hmm. they, that's why they look like that because right. there wasn't a man there to stop it like mm -hmm. a strong man is going to expect his boys to look like him exactly you're not going to come to in a strong man's house 
you know, looking any different than the way the father looks in that home. He's right. going to stand up and say, no, boy, you're not doing that. You're not tatting your head up, t- tats on your face. You're not wearing it. You're not looking like that. Right. But a woman is going to be kinder or not even kinder. She's going to be more sensitive. Well, you know, he, I mean, that's my baby. This is because, you know, she's supposed to be like she's that. that and that's where the man comes in to balance that out and say, no, no, you know, mm-hmm. I'll never forget. I tell a testimony all the time, you know, my first job when I was, you know, 14 years old was la- I was landscaping with some ex convicts and uh, my daddy got me that job. And he was like, dude, you're going to do this job. And mm-hmm. the, the dude driving the truck name was Quick Draw. And he had just did a stint in in uh, uh, down in South Texas in, in the pen. And they were smoking weed on the way to the projects. Wow. And we was going to lay cross ties in the projects. Wow. I came home one day and I was covered. I was I was the color of my shirt, mm-hmm. just covered in soot from that or whatever. I came home. My mama saw me. She's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> no, no, my baby ain't going. No, you not going back out there. You look. No, no. She just hugged me and loved all of me, whatever. My dad came and just broke us apart. <laughs> and was like, He'll, he's going back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I thank God. Quick draw them got arrested again. And it ended quick that draw. <laughs> It's like, dude, you better draw quick so we can end this. Cause I'm t- but, uh, but you see what I'm saying? Yeah, my yeah. dad balanced out her nurturing. Absolutely. Or if my dad came in there and was beating me too hard because he was six foot two. Mm-hmm. So if he beat me too hard, then that's when you need the nourishing to come in and say, no, that's enough. Right. And so the man and the woman balance each other out. That's why two men and two women can't do that. Right. Man, you're going to have some problems. That's why God won't let them have children. Right. Because it's, in that, no in that, that scenario, right. you're going to have some problems. And man, I went all off the topic. But <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> and it's my show, so you know I can do it. But um, women, <laughs> it's spiritual fornication that the women are leading leading the men into and, and, and leading the members into. And right. this always comes when a man does not stand up and be the authority that God has called him to be. And see, I'm glad you mentioned quick draw. See, somebody needed to know that. <laughs> As we were saying, he might be about watching. <laughs> oh, go ahead. When talking with some of the millennials, one thing that I've noticed now that's becoming very popular is they're deciding not to go to church. They're staying home and they're watching it online. So when we were growing up, and maybe I'm telling our age, but J. Brian may not know anything about this. We <laughs> talked about corporate worship. So is that dead? Is corporate worship dead? I, I think uh, what's what's popular now is that a lot of people say that there are no good churches or that they can't find a good church. Um, and, and so sadly, it is hard to find a good fellowship, yeah. you know, especially when you, you you're really going after the heart of Christ. It is it is hard. Um, that will suit your, your needs and your family. So it may require relocating. Right. So people relocate for jobs. We talked about this before. They relocate for schools, love interests. Um, so how important is fellowship and good sound doctrine? That, that's what you have to ask yourself as an adult with the ability to look for jobs in different areas, different states, different cities, uh, different country lines. You have to put forth that effort if that's what's truly important to you or as important to you. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, it, it, it was always amazing to me when I was younger, coming up and maturing in, in the faith that people will apply faith to what, what's only seemingly the spiritual deep stuff, but never to the natural life. Mm-hmm. So if you believe God got you the job, wherever you live in, if you believe God is taking care of you and allowing you to get up every day and maintain good health and go and punch that clock in Minnesota, he won't do it in Nevada. (laughs) That would would be, you know, and I understand that's a far stretch, but read read the stories in the Bible about that all the time. The people of God picked up and they moved wherever the the spirit of God led them to move to. Um, And I have somewhat of a testimony behind that, too. I didn't know what I was doing when I decided to move to Texas. Had no clue. I had a conversation with my parents about it because I'm like, listen, I know that I'm a, 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 a I'm an impromptu guy. I, I do things right. Mm-hmm. Um, I get excited. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I do things. And and my mom was a, been, has, has always been a praying woman, has always been a Bible reading, um, a Christian, Holy Spirit filled woman. And I remember having a conversation with her and before I can finish the sentence. She said, you do whatever God is telling you to do. She already knew what I was trying to communicate, even though it was kind of hard for me to get it out. So. I myself have done it, you know, and in an effort to provide something better for myself, for my wife and for my three children. At the time, my wife was pregnant with our daughter. So it's possible. The thing is, are you are you willing to take those steps um, as a faithful man, as a faithful woman to God to say, you know what? I'm that serious about 
understanding who you really are. I'm, I'm that serious about really matching my life out with life up with your will. Um, and then Lord lead me. And then if he's going to lead you, then he's going to provide. If he's going to provide, then you'll be all right. Right. Eventually. Right. right. No, but, well, we can't put our faith in the job anyway. I amen. Mean, I mean, so the same belief we have that this job is going to pay our bills and take care of us, then God lead me to a fellowship. Whether right. it's in town or wherever it is, I need to find that fellowship because that's good for my family. Uh, I personally believe corporate worship will never die. Uh, it's impossible. It'll never die. Don't listen to YouTube. Don't listen to these guys. <laughs> Don't listen to black Hebrew Israelites. Don't listen to none, none of them. God established the church. Christ established the church. Okay. He did that. And then after he left, he let the disciples build it. And the disciples built the church and it was a very serious matter. So serious that Ananias and Sapphira tried to cheat it out of some money and they dropped dead. Literally wow, just, just like that, like that mm -hmm. because it was a serious issue for the church to be built. So mm -hmm. cor corporate worship is not going to die and it's not going to die for these three reasons. The Bible tells us that we are to know those that labor among us. OK, you can't do that from the Internet. We are to forsake not the fellowship as the day approaches. OK, mm -hmm. and then the third thing, we ought to build each other up in the most holy faith. Right. All of these commands need human contact to execute. OK, so this is talking about human contact and I don't have time to go into all of the energies that come from us and, 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 and our bodies and how much is going on outside of our bodies and how important it is for our energies to mesh with one another. You right. know, we talk about the spirit of the Lord moving and these kind of things. But a lot of this is energy exchange, right. a lot of it. And the way the spirit moves and works in some of us is is through energies and different things like that. I don't want to sound new age because, you know, folks start. You know, <laughs> well, he talking about the aura and the chakras, uh -oh. nah, you know, but 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 it is it's, it's energies and different. You know, those things matter uh, when you're uh, even, even when you're uh, in love and or, or when you get married uh, to become one flesh, you, you right. have to have sexual contact to, to right. truly become one flesh. So all of these things matter. Uh, and God wants us all in each other's space so that we can hold each other accountable and we can check each other and then we can grow up. And then most importantly, we can create a community for our children and our families and different things. So corporate worship is very important. Uh, the power and the strength you get from like minded believers, you can't get from YouTube. Right. Uh, all you're going to get on YouTube is a head full of folks that's church hurt. Right. And so you can't trust it if you don't know those that, that you know, if you don't know them mm -hmm. like you would know those that are laboring among. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. So here's another. That's one trend. But here's another one. And it's starting to become very popular. People are not wanting to be named as a Christian. Mm -hmm. So they're opting for the titles of or being labeled as positive or inspirational or inspiring. Talk about that. Right. Right. Um, so so as a Christian rapper myself, I, I hear this a lot and it's mm -hmm. been going on for a very long time. And unfortunately, the same way um, and EX Ministry has dealt with this as well, the same way. The warning went forth years ago, right? The idea that we could take a subculture, imitate it, and then try to use it for, I guess, the the, the meanings or the purposes or the services of the church mm -hmm. was always a bad idea because all the you have to emulate how it started. So you had a whole industry or sub industry of people who call themselves Christian hip hoppers, right? Mm -hmm. These Christian hip hoppers now, if, if, you pay, if you've paid attention, they've all come out, they all grew up without fathers. Mm -hmm. So the same rebellion that existed inside of hip hop also existed inside of Christian hip hop and still does. So that's why they're coloring their hair. That's why they're wearing earrings. That's why they still look to hip hop as a, a, a sort of a, a, a adoption. Like they don't feel validated unless hip hop receives them. So mm -hmm. if, if you're going after this particular pedestal or this platform, out all of these years, eventually you're going to come to a conclusion that I can't take Jesus with me. So then you drop Christianity. Mm -hmm. You drop Christianity, then you gain the platform, then you gain the interest of those people. Now you become this new age, if you will, missionary that doesn't, that doesn't even use the gospel to, to win souls. So how is it that you're on a mission from Christ, right? If you're not using what you started off using. So it, it, it all comes back to that um, when, it, when you talk about dropping that particular um, moniker. So um, it, it's all about money at the end of the day. And people are looking to drop Christ um, because they're, they're, they're looking for ways or they're seeking ways to be included in larger arenas and platforms for themselves. So if we look at 1 Timothy 6 and 10, 
it, say, it states that for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through erred from the faith with, with many sorrows. And these guys, man, if, if you're paying attention, every other month, they're all getting divorced. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all just going a totally different way. And, they, and, and they'll take the foundation that they had and completely just, just throw dirt on it now because they didn't do what they were supposed to do to live up to it. They didn't make the good decision. So now they have to make the way of Christ the, the real error so that they can do what they want to do for this bigger platform of money. Yeah, yeah. And it's foolish. It's yeah. foolish to think that you could use Christ, you know, like a Lecrae or something. Lecrae used CCM for fame. They were mm -hmm. bringing him to all the arenas and different things and letting him open up for uh, the, the, the evangelists and different things. And then once he got a certain level of fame, he said he didn't want to be known as a Christian rapper anymore. Yep. And he dropped Christian out of it. Now he's just a rapper. I, I, I'm a rapper that happens to be a Christian. That's what he said. <laughs> you know, and it's, you just backdoor in Christ. And, and, and what they fail to realize is that at the end of the day, they're ashamed of him. Mm -hmm. You are ashamed of Christ. He got on wilding out. And, you know, they get on these shows and some of them, uh, Andy Manio and others like that, they, they're coming out with, I don't even believe the Bible or, uh, some of the others coming out. I'm, you know, I'm, I don't, I don't have confidence that all of the words of the Bible are true and these right. kind of things. They're saying all this stuff because they're ashamed of him because they feel like Christ is blocking them from getting the level of fame that they want. So right. they're ashamed of him. But he said, if you're ashamed of me, uh, I'm going to be ashamed of you. Um, yeah. Uh, when I stand before the Father. And, and I, you know, that's one thing I've never been. I've never been ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. It's the power of God unto salvation. Mm -hmm. How am I going to be ashamed of the man that called me? If you right. started out rapping for Christ, what are you without Christ? Right. <laughs> and so Mark 8 and 38 says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the son of man be ashamed. Now, he's specific here. He's telling you the he's painting the whole picture. If you're going to be ashamed of me in front of these folks on Wild It Out. All right. The adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father. I don't want him ashamed of me. So I'm definitely not going to be ashamed of him. Amen. But I can't be ashamed of him if I know he's real and for all he's done for me. I can't right. sell him out for some fame, because then once I get the fame, what will it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose his soul? What will I have when I stand before him? All right, well, we're talking about a church in the millennial mindset. We're encouraging you to share this video with those that you know it can be a blessing to and visit us online at exministries.com. This is an extraction project where people need to make sound decisions. Kundalini is the false Holy Spirit because it mimics Power. Why do they want Kundalini? Because Kundalini manifests the sideshow in the church and gives them money. That's right. That's they can stand up and call out your credit card number and your social security number. That's a sideshow. Folks pay for that. They raise thousands. These guys bring profane music into the church and they work under the, the folks I showed you. And they work in the same magic with their music. How do we bring your glory? He said, you are my glory. When I created you, I created you in my image and in my likeness so you'll bring me glory. A good marriage, good children, teaching, those things bring me glory. And he said it's good. We're back with more and we've got more great questions for you. We're talking about church and the millennial mindset. So let's start with this. There are a lot of movements going on right now. You've got a just an example, Me Too, the Black Lives Matter, you know, hashtag this, hashtag that. Have people shifted their mindset to fight all of the causes and forgotten that ultimately God is still in control? Well, I think it'd be safe to say, but unfortunately, God is not in control of them, right? Um, so what we have is people that are distracted by all of these movements. That give, so what, these, what, they, what happens is these movements give them purpose and value while they're only neglecting God and his plan for them. So you got a, a, a uh, almost like a nation of people who hear a hashtag or who hear a movement that's happening and because they're void, oh, let me attach myself to that versus just paying attention to God, unfortunately. So what they're doing is they're chasing what the world calls good instead of what God calls good. So if we, if we read Romans 12 and 2, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what is good? What's acceptable? That would be the perfect will of God. So if we're talking about from a male standpoint or for, from, a, from, a, from a man or a woman standpoint, let's get defined in who we are first. So the first thing we need to do as a man for me to obtain favor in this world, the Bible says I need to find me a wife, right? Then once we have, once we come together for that holy matrimony, then we need to take the next step, whatever that plan is based on that man for his home. When the children start coming into play, and then you start doing things. And so God can see himself so he can see his son, so he can see his order. Then he started adding what he wants to add to that based on that particular order. We don't define that even as the church is, which is what we're talking about as good. Mm -hmm. What we're defining as good is somebody who like, so we have these two families. I was talking to pastor about this earlier. Unfortunately, you have somebody like a Will Smith or a Jada Pinkett. They're doing these interviews where they're they're redefining marriage and what it means for them or redefining how the family structure should be presented. Right. Um, and you can find your pros and cons in that. But the idea is that people, instead of instead of saying, hey, God, you created this, 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 this union, this bond, this male and this female. What do you want us to do? They're just going out saying, you know what? I've seen it at a dysfunction for so long. I'm just going to go ahead and apply my own understanding or my own wisdom and knowledge um, or I'm going to remix it. So I'm going to take something from Carmina. I'm going to take something from Pastor G. I'm going to take something from Will Smith. I'm going to take something from Oprah. And then they, they, they come together and they create their own thing. And, and that's what we're seeing. We're just seeing a group of people um, or, or uh, a, a number of people who are deciding to just do it their own way. And that's what the problem is. We just need to get back to what God calls good. Well, and then they attach themselves to those movements because the definition, like you're just saying, it's not good. It's not being completely defined to them or right. more importantly, it's not being shown to them. Right. And that's the biggest thing. I mean, people sat and watched the, the Jada and Wheel interviews and this is the way we did our home and this is the way we did our home. Who want their kids to be like their kids? <laughs> yeah. Can we look at the kids and see that this is not a good choice? Right. Right. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Where are the examples? And that's where the church comes in into play. This is why, you know, people are going outside of the church to look for things to attach themselves to so they can be known with this organization or they can be a part of this or whatever, because they feel like, you know, what was taught to them or what is in the Bible or whatever is not relevant to them or it's not applicable to them because they haven't seen examples of it. Right. So it's like a, I'm, I'm going to roll some dice with my children or with my home. I'm just going right. to take the best of and put it all together like you were saying. But if the church would stay true to preaching and teaching the word, we could be good examples of how God blesses and cares for his people. That would be what we would see. The problem is that the church is not leading a good example in having balanced homes, respect, respectful children and loving relationships. If you have those, then people don't outsource. I mean, people right. are in Black Lives Matter and these they're doing these marches and these protests because they saw someone else's kid killed or they saw someone else or they saw this or that. Let's look at your home. Right. Like the time you're spending on that protest line, you probably need to be sewing that in your own home so you won't be next. And that's what people don't realize. These are people who have failed in these areas of having respectful children, balanced homes and loving relationships. Yeah. So they're upset. Well, we got to show them examples of this so to, to show them that it does work. It works God's way. But when you step outside of God's way, then that's when you're going to get the failure. And if we were to weigh it out, we would see it. But people are so hurt now, you know, by the bad decisions and different things that they've made. They're always looking you know, for a way to express themselves some other way. Oh, I failed at this. So let me run out and grab a picket sign and march to save some other kids right. versus, hey, in this fellowship, we're teaching you how to repair that relationship with your kid, mm -hmm. how to repair that relationship with your mom, repair that relationship with your dad or whatever the case may be. And that way you can, you know, uh, bear the bear the good fruit and you can be we could all be examples of, of, of God's way really being effective and working. And see, Pastor G, you just made a good point about in those movements and things like that, they are speaking out. So then my next question has to be, why have so many Christians gone silent? It's almost like they're afraid to say what is right to those who are doing wrong. Well, how can they say anything if they don't know what to say? I mean, that you have to start there first. But if the people are not armed with the truth, then they, they either remain silent or they misspeak. So this is this issue is a lack of Bible reading and understanding. Right. 
Um, we, we have an example of that of the Bereans um, in the book of Acts. Even though Paul was, you know, a great teacher, you know, they still went and checked behind him in the scriptures to make sure or to get to gain a better understanding or make sure they followed through with what they were being taught. I can't apply. Pastor G, when Pastor G preaches on Sunday mornings. We sit there, we listen, right? We amen them, we laugh, we do all of that good stuff. But it does us no good if we leave the church building, right, or the place where we meet, and then we don't apply any of it, or we don't go over the the information that was given to us, so we can, can to work through it. These things, you know, I think that um, just two seconds. I think people think that being a Christian is a simple, easy task, and that. We feel like, oh, you hear it, you hear about it, you hear it, God is good at it, and then we all walk around on these like clouds of just whatever, whatever, and everything just falls into place. We're we're still human beings. We we profess that all the time. We we have times where we want to be a little bit rebellious. We have times where we want to be a little bit more, um, I guess, relatable in a sense. And then back to the fellowship until we come across another fellow brother in Christ or sister in Christ, and then we're reminded, you know what? I don't have to side with that side. Or I don't have mm-hmm. to be a part of that in order for me to feel whatever it is that I'm, I'm after. It. I just have to continue to make these good decisions. So it really just comes down to that. People have to be armed with what to say in those times and in those moments. You need to get in, into a fellowship that that can, continuously encourages that. Yeah. And it's a fault of church leaders, too, mm-hmm. uh, especially, you know, pastors that uh, have gone silent. I mean, I know. Some some pastors that they can go a whole year and they've told me they've bragged about it. Man, I can go a whole year without preaching on sin. Wow. It's like, wow, dude, I can't read, you know, two. I can't read a page in the Bible without seeing it mentioned. <laughs> right. You know, and they they t- they get on me, too. Brother, that's all you do is talk about the negative. You the negative, the negative, the negative. I said, well, what are the people doing? I'm talking about what folks are doing. Right. Like Paul talked about what they were doing. Mm-hmm. I can find myself in the Bible. Mm-hmm. I can't find Joel Osteen and them dudes in there. I can't find <laughs> nobody like that. I can't find Smile and John always preaching the good stuff. That's um, not in my Bible. Right. In my Bible, they preached against sin. They told folks the truth because they didn't want to see people die and go to hell. Amen. And that's what I do. So, you know, I, it's, it's the fault of the, the leaders because that spirit comes from the leadership. So if I'm going to hide it and not preach against sin because I got a church full of folks in sin, mm-hmm. then uh, these people aren't going to go out and be a light. Right. Mm-hmm. And the Bible said, what good is it? I mean, if you are the light of the world, why would you take that light and hide it right. or hide it under a bushel? That makes no sense. Yeah. So if you're the light of the world, then you should be shining bright. Right. Amen. And so the, the, the preacher should be the one preaching that and, and should be the first to show that, that, hey, I'm going to preach against sin so that you guys can stand and live against sin. Amen. So I got one last question. Do y'all remember the Holy Ghost? <laughs> I mean, do we still even teach about him? I mean, do people understand the role he plays in all of this? Well, <laughs> So, so being filled with God's spirit means that be, being filled with the spirit of God means that we are filled with his spiritual fruit, right? And you, you find it's that. It's supposed to mean that. It's supposed to mean that, which is in Galatians 5 and 22, okay? The spiritual fruit causes us to bear the fruit. So how do I, how do I produce it or how do I help produce it if I don't have it myself, right? Okay? Uh, so many people today claim salvation, but they really aren't filled with God's spirit, which means basically they're not saved. Mm-hmm. Right. They make head decisions without heart decisions. The test of time really shows whether or not you believe to the saving of the soul. So all of this, you're saved from here on out. Once you make that proclamation, once you say, God, come into my life, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Yeah. OK, so now we got to live that out mm-hmm. continually. And then we have to continue leaving it because once we get to heaven, what are we going to be doing? Still living it. Right. Right. So you can't stop it. And, and, I, and I think that's the biggest issue that people don't recognize that most people are just reacting to an emotional situation Mm -hmm. that's taking place in that moment. So if I've had seven days of hell in my house, seven days of hell on my job, or whatever the case may be, and then Carmina invites me to church, and I'm in there, and the music is great, and the pastor gets up, and and whoever's speaking, and and they start preaching what seems like it's specifically to me. I'm already an emotional wreck, right? And you start speaking to my situation, tears start flowing. I start feeling it. I see this person jumping, so I start jumping. I see this person running, so I start running. All I'm doing is mimicking what I'm saying. And now I'm being told, 
All you got, all you have to do is, and that's not the truth, right? It starts here, mm -hmm. but then it continues for the rest of your life. Um, and I think that's what the issue is. People have to really do a self-examination and really define if they if they are indeed a Christian. Yeah, and you know the Holy Holy Ghost has gotten such a weird reputation of doing mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, people because of the Kundalini experiences and the you know the energy experiences, the different things from India and the different feelings people get or whatever. Now it's almost like people want to manifest some kind of magical uh, happening right. to prove that you have it. You know, they want you to speak in tongues, even though, you know, what you're saying can't be understood by anyone. Right. You know, and Paul said, don't do that. If right. there's no one there to interpret it, then don't do it. Right. But people still, they just, oh, well, everybody go forth in the holy language. Oh, you get filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and then it's not even a language. It's just like, <laughs> dude, you, are you, are you talking to a machine gun? Are you, you, you ministering to an AR-15? I mean, I mean, that's, that is that, do I need to pull my gun out for the interpretation? Uh. <laughs> I can do that. So what I'm saying is people just, I mean, it got so goofy right. in the church because people were chasing a feeling or they right. were chasing a manifestation and folks got to live, forgot to live right. They wow. forgot to live right. They forgot to, wow. they forgot to love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, yes. and temperance. They forgot the nine fruits that come. If you're filled with this spirit, then you're filled with this fruit. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Because the only way, ooh, I want to <laughs> say this on the exposition, exposition. The only way we know that you are filled with the Holy Ghost, it ain't by the gift of the speaking in tongues and all that. No, the only way we know, the Bible says by their what? Fruits, mm -hmm. you will know, know them. them. That's Bible, okay? Mm -hmm. So let me see your fruit. After you wipe the phone, after you wipe the phone up, and after you bring out the buckets and, and clean up the vomit and the nest, and you done threw the nest up and, and all of that, after, you, after you've done all of that, mm -hmm. let, 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 get, uh, 21 days, let me, let, let's go 21 days of love, joy, peace, right. long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Basically, the fruit's gonna make you go attack all of your inconsistencies, mm -hmm. everything that's wrong with your life. Now you're on a mission to correct every wrong because you have these fruit in you that want to bear fruit. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you feel, then that's what we need to see. But see, Carmina, that's the problem. When you said, remember him, the Holy Ghost, he's been neglected because people have chased a phantom. Right. They've chased an experience. They've chased falling out and flipping over and diving into the drums and getting clocked by a speaker and just, you know, just going crazy. <laughs> they, they, and so folks, you know, I've had people tell me, say, man, I, 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 you know, I, I want to visit your church. Okay, okay. They're like, man, Nah, 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 nah. Y'all don't be getting the Holy Ghost or nothing, do you? I be like, what? Getting, getting the like, Holy Doc, Ghost. We, no, Doc, cause last time I saw somebody get the Holy Ghost, Doc, they, they got knocked unconscious. Wow. I said, you know, stuff like that. So I'm like, man, y'all just got the Holy Ghost out here. Like, just got, got, got him with a bad rep. No, he has a very good reputation. He's easily entreated. Let me tell you something. Take the Holy Ghost power of God and apply it and fix your life. Amen. That's what salvation is. Mm -hmm. How you save if you ain't saved? <laughs> so in order to be saved, let's let this fix our lives. Man, I don't want to hear about how the lights flashed and the roof opened up and a giant hand reached in and scooped you up. I don't want to hear that. Brother, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temper. Give me something I can take home, I can apply to my situation, right. and I can fix my life with. Right. All right. I'm going to close with this, okay? <laughs> it is so important to be in a place where the word is being taught and truth is being preached. And I know the church is getting a bad rap by YouTube. It's getting a bad rap by the black Hebrew Israelites. And there are issues in the church, just like there were in the seven churches of Asia. There are issues. Right. But um, it's, it's still, God left it here for a reason. He created it for a reason. And it's important for us to be in a place where the word is being taught and truth is being preached. Having a foundation in the Bible and our children having good examples 
will keep the legacy of God potent in the earth to lead men to repentance. We all need each other. This will change the perception of many concerning Christianity. These millennials, their perception will change if they see us change. And this will strengthen God's presence in this wicked world. Now, the scripture in 2 Timothy 3 and 13 says it's going to get bad and it's going to get worse. It says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou have learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You got to know who you learned them from. That's knowing those that labor among you. Mm -hmm. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Jonathan, he's our marker. Show you a little thing. What's up? Dear of operator. This is Tasha. Center camera. Jerris. Camera number one. Or left camera. Whichever camera you work. There's Carnita Barnett. Landon Isaac. Lewis. Producer. Billy Davis. Switcher. Eddie. Everything else. Oh, this is Rob. Audio. Extraordinary. Ashley, she just called. She's our biggest fan. 